I know I spilled some. This doesn't fit. Cool. I have to redo that one. Oh. Hey guys, it's Erica and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be doing another big batch recipe. We're gonna be making cold brew um, from home, from scratch, using just filtered water and coffee grounds. It's super easy, I'll show you how to do it. And then I'm also at the end gonna show you what I do with my cold brew after it's brewed and ready. So what I have here are just all the ingredients laid out and ready to go. As you can see, it's not very much. Um, I have this huge pitcher that I normally put it in. It makes it really easy to just put it on one large container until it's ready to go and then I'll portion it out into mason jars. I've got a measuring cup to measure out the water. I've got a scale to weigh out our coffee. That is the trick here. You need to weigh your coffee grounds. And then I've got the filtered water. So what I normally do is I normally use this Trader Joe's coffee for it. Um, I don't normally brew this. I brew something different at home every day. This is one that I have found is really tasty though. I've made lots of batches of cold brew with this stuff. But actually this last week there was this cold brew coffee um, package at HEB that I got with a coupon. It was just like free with another purchase of something else. So I thought, okay, I'll try this this time. Um, the directions on the side are really, really confusing though. It says put one part coarse ground coffee into a pitcher and then add four parts cold filtered water. So does it mean I'm gonna do like one cup of coffee and then four cups of water? Um, I'm not really sure. I thought it was confusing, but really what you need to know here is that coarse ground or even a medium ground coffee is going to be the best for this. So you do not wanna get the espresso um, ground coffee or if you're gonna grind it yourself, you wanna to go towards the middle or more coarse because we are gonna be soaking this for 24 hours and it's going to absorb a lot of that flavor very quickly. Um, you wanna make sure that you have a more coarsely ground coffee. So we're just gonna use this and I'm gonna follow the recipe that I normally do and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is get out my scale and I'm actually gonna tear it out to put it to zero and then pour my coffee grounds into the pitcher on top of it. And I'm gonna pour until I get to 10 ounces and then we will start adding the water on top. Um, you don't weigh out the water. So I measure that in my Pyrex cup there and I like to use the Brita pitcher to put the water in there. That's kind of how I cycle my water for the fridge. We do not have a fridge that has one of those dispensers on the front that gives you fresh water. Um, it's kind of a pain point of mine. I'm just waiting for a new fridge. Maybe one Christmas I'll get one. But um, now I'm just measuring out 10 cups of water to go on top of the 10 ounces of the coffee. And then I'm going to stir it up, make sure it's mixed really well, and then put the lid on it. And then I'll move it into the fridge and just make sure you have room for your big pitcher in the fridge. And I will leave it there for about 24 hours. Sometimes it ends up being a little bit longer, um, but I always do at least 24 hours. So here is the next day. And what I have is just a bowl and a sieve set up. And I will strain it twice, actually. I like to do the, the one of the white handle that you saw there and then also the one with the metal handle, the white one is a little bit thicker and it kind of gets out more of the bigger chunks. And then I like to do the um, metal one, which is actually like a bartender's um, strainer. That helps to get out more of like the fine ground pieces that we have going on. Now that stuff at the bottom there, you don't want to scrape that out and try to like press any of the coffee out of there. That's gonna cause a lot of bitterness in the coffee and you don't want that. So whatever you can get out and just let it sit there and wait and see what happens, take a drink of water just like I did, that's perfectly fine. But what you don't wanna do is start pressing because that's when you're really gonna get the bitterness out of there. So just be patient, let whatever little bit comes out, come out and then put your lids in your mason jars and you will be good to go. Okay, so if you guys remember, we started off with 10 cups of water and we did 10 ounces of coffee and now we ended up with just about six and a half cups of cold brew. These are four cup containers or quart containers. And what I like to do now is I like to take these 
and go ahead and pre-mix some um, iced coffee. So I can add sugar to this, maybe some cinnamon, um, some pumpkin spice seasoning, some milk. Sometimes I'll even do collagen or some protein powder and just kind of blend it up. You could just do some vanilla extract, some almond extract and mix it up. And then I'll keep some just straight black in the fridge and then the rest I will go ahead and turn into iced coffee so that I can just pour it out of the mason jar and drink it. And in case you're wondering about the rest of this at the bottom, I leave this in here. I do dump some of out into the trash can, but I will put this back in here, add more water to this, and then just go run out and pour it on my rose bushes in the front yard. And then I'll just keep doing that until all of it's kind of rinsed out and then run it to the dishwasher. All right, so it's almost dark now. I'm just gonna take my coffee mixture and Pour a little bit on my rose bushes. There's some more. Oh, and we have a little, a little friend coming up to see, say hey. Hi, guy. Hmm. He's probably gonna run away in a minute when my dog starts barking at him. Looks like he's on that guy over there. <laughs> so I just kind of pour it until there's like a little bit at the bottom and then I'll go and add more water and repeat. You don't want to just drop straight coffee grounds on it, but a little extra tip.